the number one goal of this video is to end it with less unlisted inventory than I currently have which is gonna be easier said than done because this week there are two sourcing opportunities that I in the past have bought a lot of things at. Tonight is Monday night. The first sourcing opportunity is Thursday night. The second is Saturday. I will have both of those in this video. I'll show you guys what I got unless it's like a couple of years ago at the one I bought like over a hundred items. So if it's just way too many for this video, then I'll have to break it up. But again, the goal is to not upload this video if I have more unlisted inventory than I have right at this moment. It is the next night, so about 24 hours later, and I'm gonna show you guys what I got photographed last night. So first are these pair of bookends. They are like monks or something. And um, I listed those at 22 plus shipping. Oh, I guess I should say that I bought two lots of stuff at auctions for like $1.50 each per lot. And there was one item I wanted in each lot. And a lot of these items are the other things that were in the lot. So these were in one of the lots where I wanted something else and these were in the lot, but it looked like they sell for around $20, so I listed those. This was another item that was in one of the lots. It is an elephant. Unfortunately, the eyeball is missing. It looked like someone had sold this exact one for $49 plus shipping, but they also have two more listed at $49 plus shipping, and those haven't sold. And then there's others that aren't quite the same that are selling for around the $20 mark. So since mine's missing the eyeball, I did list it around 20 plus shipping. Then we have this and what do you think this is used for? Because I wasn't sure. The description on eBay of other people who have this listed is a hot dog container or a bacon container or a chicken marinating container. Listed this at 10 plus shipping. Not a high dollar amount, but it's really easy to photograph. I paid $2 for it. This ball sells for about 25 plus shipping. I bought a lot of toys at the at the online auction for, again, like that dollar to $2 mark for the whole box of toys. And my nieces and nephews took a lot of them. But again, this one looked like it was selling for about 25. Unfortunately, the battery compartment was corroded and I did try to clean it with white vinegar. That has worked in the past, but it still isn't working. So this one I'm just going to get rid of because it won't work. Then we have these shiny bright ornaments. So they are pink ornaments. These it looks like they sell for about $20 a box. Again, specifically for this brand, shiny bright. They're vintage mercury glass ornaments. And if they have designs on them, they sell for more. So there was ones that were selling for like $40, $50 a box, but they all had designs and weren't just a plain color. But these should sell for about $20 a box. Unfortunately, four of mine are, are cracked or yeah, have cracks in them. So I might get a little bit less than 20 a box plus shipping, but hopefully pretty close to that. Okay, that covers that table. Then down here, these are a pair of shoes. Um, one of my friends asked me to list for her. So I do do things on commission every once in a while and she had just three items. So I checked those to list for her and they are in pretty nice condition. These will be listed like at least at $100. I actually, actually accidentally bought these. <laughs> I was watching a whatnot not auction and I accidentally clicked the bid button. So yeah, so I bought those and I don't know if I'll make my money back after fees, but gotta get them listed. They're definitely too big for me. And yeah, I could have um, canceled the order, but I didn't wanna do that. It was my own fault for bidding on them. So this is a stamp holder. This was another item that was in one of the lots that it wasn't actually what I was purchasing lot for, but it is actually worth some good money. It's an unopened stamp holder. And people, this one obviously is brand new. Used ones of this exact design have consistently sold for $25. So that's awesome. <laughs> like I said, I didn't buy the lot for this. I just looked through the lot and checked if there were any other valuable items. and. This little stamp holder is worth about at least $25. So those are all the items that I photographed last night. My husband and I are gonna go take the dogs on the walk. It's really nice out, it's like 60 degrees right now. So we're gonna take the dogs on a walk and then I'm going live on the Nurse Flippers channel at seven. It is now 5.45, so we really have to get out and get moving because we usually walk for about an hour. And then I'll be on her channel and then that'll be done at like nine. So I guess my goal tonight is just to list the stuff I already photographed that isn't listed. 
Another thing, this was another item that happened to be in a lot that I bought and I don't know what to do with it. It is 17 pounds, so it's very heavy, does not have any markings on it. So I think what I'm gonna do in the live tonight is ask because I know the Nurse Flipper buys auction lots and lists all kinds of random stuff. So I'm gonna ask for advice and what the other people will do and I'll let you guys know. It is the next afternoon. Last night we went for a walk. We walked about three miles and then I got back, ate some food real quick, jumped on the live and I ended up actually being on the live or chatting with the group from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And then I went to bed shortly after. <laughs> I wanted to follow up though on this. So this again, this is 17 pounds. It's like 21 inches tall. And there's what it looks like as four faces. So I asked the group last night. So again, I was live on the Nurse Flippers channel and she had about 600 people watching live. And I asked the other people that were live with me as well as the chat what they would do. And the overall consensus was definitely list it definitely list it high like the comments range from anywhere from a hundred to five hundred dollars is what people suggested and they said you know it looks hand carved the eyes i definitely don't think that they are stickers they, they look like they're actually there's been a space dug out and a stone put in so yeah the consensus was list it high and see what happens so that is what i'm going to do right now it is 2 30 and 3 p.m. today, I have my 20-week ultrasound to see baby girl. <laughs> so I'm very excited. We're going to go to that now, and hopefully she looks good and everything is healthy. It is Thursday. I am on my way to the first sourcing opportunity of the week. So we're heading to a sale where there's this organization that gets donations every year of professional clothing and they provide the clothing to people who are preparing for interviews but they get way more donations every year than they could possibly use and so they sell the excess donations in this sale so i went for the first time four years ago and i went to the first night sale so you have to like you have to actually pay to attend the first night so i went to the first night and there was a huge line when i got there and people run in and they're yelling like, I found this brand, like I found Gucci, I found whatever. And I didn't find those things because I wasn't at the front of the line, but I found a ton of good stuff. I got, like I said, like a hundred items or something. The moral of the story is I'm extremely excited for this sale. I hope I find some good things. I'm gonna go straight to the shoes because the shoes are all, I think, I'm pretty sure it said they're all $5 a pair. Last time I went, like at least half the items I got were shoes. The only one I remember, again, this was four years ago. The only one I remember was a pair of Pedro Garcia heels. I'll put the comp on the screen. Of, not the comp, but what my actual pair sold for. So anyways, I'll be going straight to the shoes, trying to find some high dollar shoes. And then we'll see where we go from there. The sale starts at 4.30, which is annoying for someone who works a full-time job, because it's Thursday at 4.30. So I, um, I normally sign off between five and six, but today I signed off at like 3.45 and got my stuff ready to go and i will be getting there at 4 20 so yeah like i'm not gonna be at the front of the line but you know girls got a full-time job what do you do <laughs> one of my friends is coming with me and there'll be food and drinks so either way i'll get to enjoy some food some good time with my friend and hopefully find some good items to flip as well last time i went last year i didn't get a ticket to the vip night i went to the normal day the last day i think and there was not much left at all. I didn't get, I only got stuff for myself for work. I didn't get anything to flip. So I'm hoping tonight I find some more stuff to resell. Since I'm pregnant, I don't really want to buy anything for myself because I'm not sure what size I'll be after pregnancy. But if I find something that works for maternity wear or things to flip, then that's what I'm going to buy tonight. from the sale and it definitely was not a fail. We've got one Ikea bag. 
but it wasn't a crazy success like four years ago when I got like 100 items. And I'm sorry for the lighting, I know it's really yellow and dark in here, but I'm tired and I don't wanna to go to my basement and like get all the lighting and set up and everything. So, sorry, this will, this will be fine, right? We've got Monty and Jack keeping me company. So first of all, let's talk about the sale overall. So it's definitely much, much different than it was four years ago when I had the crazy haul from the sale. And I think the main reason is that when I went four years ago, they had everything mixed together. So all the shoes are $5. All of the shirts are $8. Whereas now they've pulled out the designer items and they have a designer section where everything is marked either 25, 50, 75, or 100. So for example, those Pedro Garcia heels I found a few years ago, those would have been in the designer section. Four years ago, I found quite a few Eileen Fisher items. Those would have been in the designer section. So, so yeah, so there, there isn't as many crazy finds to find because they've already pulled them and marked them up. And like when I went four years ago, it was like, it was chaos. It was so fun. <laughs> like they opened the gate, people, or opened the gate, opened the door and people were running to the racks and like squealing with excitement when they would find like a designer item in the racks. And there were maybe 20 to 30 people in line for the changing rooms. Today it was much calmer and all of the, again, all the really great good items were marked up like 25, 50, 75, 100. But I still found some gems that I think should have been marked up, but they weren't, so definitely bought them. Let me show you guys what I got. So first we have good old cowboy boots. I love picking up any cowboy boots I found find in good condition because it's basically nearly impossible to get cowboy boots for cheap, so they often have really good resale value. These are from the brand Dingo. They're in extremely good condition. They are um, not fully leather, but they do have leather uppers. And these should, so I paid $5 for these. So all the shoes that weren't in the designer section were $5. So yeah, I paid $5 for these. They should sell for somewhere between 25 to 50. Let me see what size they are. They're size women's seven and a half. So that's my first find. And yeah, great flip five into probably like $40. Next, okay. I love Rock Revival jeans. I did a video about men's jeans that sell for high dollar amounts and Rock Revival was number one. I can't remember where it ranked in the women's list. Let me check. So in the women's list, it was somewhere around fourth place, depending on which of the three splits you looked at. So Rock Revival jeans, men's or women's, they sell fast and they sell for good money and I love finding them. They had three pairs of Rock Revival jeans mixed in their jean section and not pulled out into the designer area. And so I paid $8 a piece for three pairs of Rock Revival jeans. So here is the first pair. They are size 26 and these are the Jacqueline Capri. Capri's in general sell for a little bit less, not a little bit less, usually quite a bit less than the full length jeans, but for Rock Revival for $8, they're still worth picking up. Looks like these should sell for around $30. So again, $8 into about 30, and they would be much higher, but they are the Capri style, which sell for less than the full length. Then the next pair of Rock Revival jeans are these, they are also a size 26. And they are the style, the Lose Skinny. Okay, the style's much better. So there's three 60, 80, 50, 45, 36, 85. So those are anywhere between like 40 and $80. And again, I paid $8 for these Rock Revivals. I was very excited <laughs> when I saw I saw the stitching. I literally just saw the stitching on the edge and I was hoping, I literally saw them from like a little bit of ways and I was like, please be Rock Revivals. I pulled them and I saw their Rock Revivals and I'm like, oh my gosh, are there any more? And I found three pairs total. And yeah, then I got very excited. So here's another pair of Rock Revivals. These are size 30. And they are the style that Olivia Straight. So this one, the sold are kind of all over the place. Like $60 is the first one, then 40, but then 10, then 40, then 55. In 29 but still like it looks like maybe 40 to 60 is what I can get for these and here is what they look like again they're size 30 and they are straight style so if you find men's or women's rock revivals under $10 and they're in good condition like no 
wear on the hem, no stains. I would definitely pick them up. Like I said, one of my favorite brands to pick up, Rock Revival. It's a, it came up, like I said, in the top 10 for both men's and women's jeans when I did the research on jean brands. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll link in the description. You can go check that out after this video. The next two items are for myself. I got a cardigan and a shirt for myself. All right, we have three more items. Next are these. They're from the brand, I don't know if it's called Allegria or Allegria, but I always know because they have this butterfly on this, the sole and they generally have pretty good resale value. So I paid five, $5 for these. And I looked just now inside the tag and I could see that it says like M-E-R something. So I looked that number up, the M-E-R and the number, found out that the style is called the Mary Boot, M-E-R-I. And the four recent comps for this are 55, 40, 30, and 55. So $5 into somewhere around $40. Definitely happy with that. These are in very, very nice condition. All right, two more items that I picked up. Next one. These are a pair of heels from the brand Piccolinos. This has been on my uh, mental bowl list for a long time, like three or four years, but I've never found them. So I don't know if they have dropped in resale value since I learned about this brand three to four years ago. But um, for $5, I had to pick them up because again, they've been on my bowl list for a long time. I know they retail for a high amount, but let's check the resale value. All right, I found five solds for the exact same shoes for 30, 33, 22, 17, 60, and 28. So it looks like about $30 is what most of those sold for. So $5 into 30, I'm very happy with that. And again, the brand is Piccolinos and these are a size 36. So five into 30 on that. And then, oh, I have two more actually. Sorry, I thought I only had one left, but I have two more. Okay, so here we have a pair of Sam Edelman heels. These are a size women's 10 and let's check the comps on them. And again, the brand is Sam Edelman. They always will have the name in big letters inside the uh, sole, the inner sole. All right, so I looked up about six comparable sole listings for these shoes. There were two that were higher, like 60 and 65, and the other four were either 30 or $35. So again, definitely worth picking up for $5. And the final item I got were these. This is another brand that's been on my bolo list. Like I would love to find this brand. That brand is Rothy's. And these were not marked up, which I was very surprised by. I think maybe they weren't marked up because they do have a stain right here. So there is another stain, but for $5, I definitely thought they were worth it if they're authentic. Um, I know somebody on Instagram made a post about how to authenticate Rothy's. So I'm gonna go find that post right now and check if they're authentic. I know there's certain things you should see inside the tag, certain way the letters should be. So let's look it up and then also look up what these are worth. And I can finally check this off my list if they're authentic because I've been wanting to find these for a couple of years now. This is one of the reasons I love Instagram. I posted on my story and said, I found my first pair of Rothy's today. Does anyone remember who made a post about authenticating Rothy's? Within five minutes, two people, so shout out Joyfully Curated and Threads Were Find. They both sent me a message saying who the post was made from. So North Coast Style has a post about how to authenticate Rothy's. So now I'm gonna cross-reference that against my shoes and see if these appear to be authentic. I think we're good. I think I found some real Rothy's worth $100 and paid $5 for them, woo! So that is everything I bought. Um, I am going to a citywide garage sale on Saturday. So we're gonna buy some more stuff. It's Saturday morning. It is beautiful out and I'm heading to citywide garage sales in a suburb near my house. I am very excited. I haven't gone to a citywide garage sale day at all this year. And um, I went last year and had so much fun. So I'm going again. It has been three weeks since I recorded that last clip where I was heading out for the Saturday of community wide garage sales. So I went to a garage sales that day. And then three or four days later, I left for a 10 days trip to Spain with my husband and my sister. So that was super fun. And then we got back from our trip and it's been about a week since that trip. And in that last week, I've really been working on getting stuff listed. So I'm gonna show you guys what I got at the community garage, wide garage sales. I've also sourced a couple more times since then. 
So I'll show you what else I picked up and then we will update the running total for listed versus unlisted inventory. And I think I'm gonna get this video uploaded today, even though, let's just say maybe I have not met my goal, <laughs> but I am close, somewhat close. All right, let's start with the stuff I picked up the garage sales. I was a little bit disappointed with the garage sale day. I definitely got less stuff than last year. And there, there were a lot of garage sales where I didn't pick up anything at all. There was one, so I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw that there was a garage sale that had just started on that Saturday at 9 a.m. and I could see Rock Revival jeans in the picture. As I've said earlier in this video, I love picking up Rock Revival jeans. So I was with uh, my friend's aunt and I was like, can we go to this garage sale? She's like, yeah, let's go. So we went there, we got there at 10 a.m. So an hour after they opened, the Rock Revivals were already gone, but I did pick up eight items there. So that whole day I only picked up 18 items and eight of them were at this one garage sale. So let me show you what I got there. So in a similar theme to Rock Revival jeans is the brand Affliction. And I got two Affliction shirts at the garage sale. I think these were, yeah, a dollar. She told me a dollar for any t-shirts. So here's the first one. And again, the brand is Affliction. Their shirts sell for about 17 to 20 dollars is what the comps looked like this one actually just sold within the last hour for 20 dollars plus shipping on facebook marketplace and i just listed this a couple days ago so quick sale for 20 dollars plus shipping on this affliction shirt then we have another affliction shirt again i paid one dollar this one has not sold yet it's listed at 20 dollars, but i do have quite a few likers on poshmark and it's just this three-fourth length gray shirt in a size medium. And they all have this similar style like skulls, lace. Um, yeah, the last one has lace. I think it had a skull on it. This one has lace and a skull. Then we have a third Affliction shirt. This one is also a size medium. It is blue, long sleeve, blinginess, just like Rock Revival Miss Me Jeans. I put all three of those kind of in the same category in my mind, like very similar people buy Rock Revival, Miss Me, and Affliction. So, and it's a brand and a style I find often in Iowa and a brand and a style that's very popular in my hometown. So this blue Affliction shirt, I also have it listed at $20. Then we have two shirts from another related brand. That brand is American Fighter. It does not have as high of comps as Affliction, but I did list all of these shirts starting at 20. Um, but I'm guessing for the American Fighter, I might have to take an offer or lower the price a little bit. But first is this blue American Fighter shirt. And it has this mesh, open mesh detailing on the back. And this one is a size large. And then my final $1 shirt pickup at that garage sale was this American Fighter tank top. And I'm really glad we got there when we did because there were there were like probably 15 people at the garage sale um, shopping, everybody was grabbing stuff, picking it up. And like I said, we got there an hour after they opened. And that whole day, it, I was just reminded of why sometimes Saturday garage sales are not that good because the people at the sales have already had Thursday and Friday to sell. They've already had people coming through and cleaning out the sale. There was one other one that I was really excited about and they had at least half of what they had in the pictures online because people had bought so much. So again, it just reminded me that I need to just scope out garage sales more and try to get there when the garage sale actually starts. So sometimes like, I'm gonna show you guys in a little bit. I stopped at a garage sale this week that started Wednesday at noon. So I just went over my lunch break and I got some really good stuff. So I think it's better, um, what's the phrase? like? It's worth my time more if I scope things out online and find the good stuff and try to hit it when they open versus going on a Saturday and then going to picked over garage sales and not really finding too much. So those are five of the things I found at that one garage sale and then the three others were all bras and she was asking <clears throat> $2 per bra. So I got three Victoria's Secret bras. This is one of them this really pretty purple with this pink lace and this is a size 34 double D and it is the style of the dream angels push-up at that sale I also bought two more bras from her for two dollars each those two have both sold 
and they were both in the style of the bombshell plunge. The first one sold for $18 plus $5 shipping on eBay. After fees and the $2 I paid, I made a $13.03 profit on that bra. The second one, it had some armpit staining and it also had some stretch signs of stretching near the clasp. So I started that much lower at only $10 and it sold, did it sell on Facebook? No, it sold on Poshmark. So it sold on Poshmark for $10, which is unfortunate because on the lower sales, Poshmark has the highest fee. So $3 in fees, $2 I paid, I made a profit of $5.05. So those two Victoria's Secret bras already sold. So that's great. So there was another garage sale where I picked up two more Victoria's Secret bras. These I paid $3 each for. First, we have this pink one in a size 36 double D in the style of the lined Demi. This is in, it's in really, really nice condition. You know, there's not even any pilling. Like a lot of times along the wire, there'll be some pilling. So no pilling, the clasps aren't bent. Again, another common issue you'll see with bras. So again, really nice condition. Um, did this one have, one of the two had a little bit of like a, a tint on the strap, yeah. So it's not that noticeable, but there is like a little tiny bit of staining on the strap. Again, like barely noticeable, but I like to call out any flaw. And then we have a black bra, very similar. It is in the size 36D and it is the styled perfect shape. Again, it has very little wear. And so I picked it up for $3. And I have both of those listed at either 18 or 20. I'll put the listings on the screen. I picked up two pairs of American Eagle jeans and I paid $2 each for these. They were listed at five, but again, it was the last day. So I asked if they would take $2 each and they said that they would. They are both a size zero. This pair is the style, the highest rise mom jean, which is partly why I picked it up because I think that style should do well. High rise mom jean are two things that people are still looking for. And again, these are size zero, pay $2. I have them listed at $20. Then we have this other pair, also size zero and they are the highest rise jigging, distressed, raw hem, a little bit darker color than the other pair. And again, listed at 20. So everything I picked up at that garage sale day, I have listed. So let me update the total at the top. We have 18 additional listed as well as 18 additional purchased. So shouldn't make my um, total go negative, but I did get all of this listed over the last week. I didn't, oh yeah, I have been saying how much I paid. Okay, so this was the most expensive item I picked up. And I picked, oh, this was actually another item I picked up at that garage sale with the Affliction shirts. So it is a pair of pink Miss Me capris. And these also have gotten quite a few likes on Poshmark, although I have not yet sold them or got an offer. But yeah, there are these pink capris from Miss Me in a size 26. And again, I paid $5 for those at the same garage sale that had the Affliction shirts. Next up is this purse. It is a blue crossbody bag. It has two zipper compartments. And I thought it was in great condition with no flaws, but at, when I went to list it, I saw that there is some staining along the top edge of the pockets. Again, light staining. I had this purse listed at, I think, $12. I have sold two 31 purses in the past for $25 plus shipping, but they were larger purses and also a year or two, maybe at least two years ago. So I think maybe the demand has fallen a little bit and this purse also isn't as big as those two. So the comps looked quite a bit lower. So again, I listed this at $12. I picked this up for $3 at a garage sale. Next item, this was a, a sign that I was getting desperate because I really wanted to find stuff to flip. I should have left this behind. But I know some people pick up merino wool items from Banana Republic. And so I picked it up, but the comps looked as I expected, which were not that high. So I paid $1 for the sweatshirt and I ended up listing it at 10. The comps were right around 10 to $15. 
And when I went to list it, I realized that this one has a hole. So I listed it on the low end at $10. The last three items from that garage sale there are three pairs of boots. And boots are definitely a staple of Iowa garage sales for me. Miss Me or Rock Revival jeans as long, along with boots are very common pickups for me. So first is this pair of Mark Fisher boots. And they're the style, the Delary motorcycle boots in a size seven and a half. They're in really nice condition, very, very minimal wear. And I paid $1 for these. The comps were around $30 to $50, and I listed these at $40. Next is this pair of boots from the brand Echo, E-C-C-O, and they are the style, the Sartorelle boots. And they are a size 37, so EU 37, which I think is a US 6. And they're like full zip up clasps, really nice condition again. Don't have much sign of wear at all on them. The only issue is this scratch right here on the toe, but that's it. So these, the there's like a more current style of the Sartorelle that is currently selling for over $200 on Echo's website. But this is the older style and based on sold comparable listings, I listed these at $50. The final item are these brown cowboy boots. I picked these up for $3. I have never seen Levi's cowboy boots before, and that is what these are. So there is the brand. You can see the Levi's right there. And then there is the logo right here. So I actually didn't see the Levi's on the tab. I just saw this and knew from that that these were Levi's. They are vintage and they are a men's size nine. And I have these listed at 45 plus shipping. That was everything I picked up at the citywide garage sale day. And like I said, those items are all listed. So my unlisted number is not going up, which is great. Next, I'm gonna show you two items that I listed yesterday that already sold. First is this Starbucks tumbler. So yesterday morning, I went to pick up breakfast for my husband and I, and there were four garage sales within a few blocks of the coffee shop that I go to. So I stopped at them, of course. And the only things I picked up were a candle for myself and this tumbler. So if you follow the Instagram thrift to travel, she posts a lot of Starbucks tumblers that she picks up and some of them flip for really high dollar amounts. This one wasn't a super high flip, but I only paid 75 cents for it. I listed it at $32 and an hour later, I got an offer on Facebook for $25. So, I'm very happy with that 75 cents into after fees into $23.32. So over a $20 profit, paid for our breakfast with this quick stop and quick pickup. Then this sold, this is the Pokemon Master Trainer board game. If you watch all my videos, you will have seen this six months ago when I did a video about five items from the 90s that sell for big money. And since then it has just sat in my Delft pile because I knew it was gonna take a little bit of work to list it and count out all the pieces. Thankfully, it was 100% complete, has all the pieces in it. I listed it at $135 plus shipping, and I got an offer this morning for $120 plus shipping, which I accepted. And the buyer said there, there appears to be one in similar condition that's listed at $100, but your pictures are much clearer, so I feel more comfortable buying from you if you would take the $120 offer. So it goes to show that pictures can matter and this sold in just 24 hours for $120 plus shipping. I picked this up at an online auction. There was a lot of board games. I think there were four, three or four board games and I paid $18.72 for the lot. Again, this sold for 120 plus shipping and after fees, I made $95.94 profit on the board game. So I made $95.94 on this. On the tumbler, I made $22.57. And on the affliction shirt, I made $17.80. So three items that I need to get shipped out today where I profited $136.31. So it's great that I'm starting to see some sales come in from all the listing I've been doing this week. And finally, I have one more box of stuff that I have purchased, and unfortunately none of that is listed. This makes the list go up by one and the purchase go up by one. This one was purchased long before this video, so the purchase doesn't go up and listed goes up by one. And now we're gonna have a bunch of making the purchase go up. 
So this was a garage sale. Again, I stopped by at noon on Wednesday, which is very random, but some garage sales around here do start on Wednesday. Um, yeah, so I got there at noon. There was a ton of people also got there at noon. Again, probably 15 people that were walking around looking for stuff to buy. So here is what I picked up. First, we have these <laughs> corn heads, which is um, for the Nebraska Cornhusker fans. I thought that they were shoes. Like I saw them from afar like this and I thought they were shoes, but no, they are hats. Um, I paid $5 each for these because they sell for like 40 to $50 on eBay. So I'll put in some sold comps here, but yeah, hoping to flip my $5 purchases into 40 to 50 each. They're in nice condition. They have, you know, no chunks out of the foam and hopefully some Nebraska Cornhusker fans will pick these up. Next item I picked up is this fossil crossbody bag. And as you can see, I paid $4 for it. I think it is vintage. This logo looks like a vintage logo. And again, it is a canvas crossbody bag. It has this floral print inside and I paid $4 for it. it. Should sell for about $25 to $30. Next up is this pair of mucklucks. I paid $2 for these. Can you tell that I am garage selling in Iowa? We've got corn and camouflage. <laughs> so anyways, I picked up these, this pair of mucklucks. They should sell for about $20 and I paid $2 for them. Next up is another pair of shoes. They are these Keens. I also paid $2 for these. They're in pretty good shape. And I'm not sure what these are sold for. I haven't looked up comps yet, but I'm gonna guess around $20. The last items about the garage sale were kind of a mistake. So I saw the listing and it said that they had a bunch of Sensi's and that is specifically why I went to this garage sale. Last summer I went to a garage sale and I picked up like six Sensi's for I think $10 each. And they all sold within two weeks for like 25 to $45 each. So I went to this garage sale, really hoping I could pick up some more Sensi's for a good price and have a quick flip on them. And they did have Sensi's there and I was the first one to get to them. And I basically just immediately told her I'll, I'll buy them all because they were listed at $5 each. Basically, I told her I wanted all those. They went and packed them up and I started looking around the garage sale for this other stuff I bought. Well, unfortunately, what I didn't realize is that they weren't actually all Scentsies. So Scentsies is a specific brand of candle warmers or wax warmers. And half of them are Scentsies, half of them are off brands, which do not resell very well. So half of them are really not worth my time to list and ship, especially because they're so fragile because they probably retailed for like 10 to 15 and they're definitely not going to be worth the resale value. The other issue was that the ones I bought last summer were very unique, like um, a gnome and a car and a Bethlehem one. So they were very specific and themed, whereas these are more generic. So these are probably, even the Scentsy ones are only going to sell, I think, for like 10 to 20 each. So I'll still make money on them, but definitely not my best purchase. And if you net out the non Scentsies, I'm probably just gonna break even on the Scentsies. But let me show you what I got. So I'm just gonna donate the four that are non Scentsies. And then here are the four that are Scentsies. So first is this one. And next time I'll know check the lids, check that they say Scentsy, or sometimes the newer ones will say Scentsy somewhere on the actual wax warmer. So here's the first one. Again, I paid $5. Here is the second one. Again, we got Scentsy underneath, and I paid $5 for this one as well. <coughs> Another one that is Scentsy brand. And the final Scentsy uh, wax warmer. The other four are similar styles, but they, like I said, they're not Scentsy branded and I'm just going to redonate those. So with the items I picked up at that garage, so we have nine more that are purchased but unlisted to add to the total. That means I'm going to be negative, meaning I have bought more since this video started than I have listed. But I wanna get this video out to you guys today. It's been almost a month since I started recording this. So I'm gonna get this video published and then I'm gonna keep tracking. So 
I will get this stuff listed in the next video and I'll also tell you guys what sell what is selling so hopefully some of the stuff I've listed this past week will start to sell. I also booked a, another trip with my mom. So we flew last year, we flew out to Denver to the Goodwill Outlets and had so much fun. So we booked another trip, this time we are going to Houston, Texas and that is in four weeks, so one month. So I really, really want to go there with a lot less unlisted than I have right now. So stay tuned, I will make update videos, I will try to purchase less, purchase less and list more, but you're gonna have to stay tuned to find out how that goes. If you don't have the notification bell turned on, consider turning that on, you just click the bell icon and you will get notified when I upload any update videos. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned because as always, I'll have a new video out soon.